Everybody, welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, if this is the first time you're tuning in, I appreciate you showing up. Here's what we do on the show, man. I, I talk with top producing real estate agents, coaches, and authors, and I get into I get into their business. I get into their mind. I get into, hey, how did you do it? What did you struggle with? So that you can hear about these mistakes so that you don't have to go through them. Now, today's episode is a fantastic episode. Uh, one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind as you listen to this, what you should do is pop over to the site because some people are listening on the site and some people are listening on iTunes and Stitcher. Pop over to the site, superagentslive.com, and do two things. Download my free ebook, number one, and that way you can keep abreast of, you know, we will not miss future conversations like the one that we're, you're going to hear today. And two, go to the show and subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. So I'd appreciate you doing that. I hope you love the show today. Today's guest... Today's super agent is a guy named Wes Madden. Now, I, I I was lucky enough last week, I actually got to spend some time with Wes one-on-one. -on -one. He's just as cool in person as he is in this interview. And look, his background, man. This, this guy, he's a former Black Hawk helicopter pilot. Um, you know, he's he's a full-on adrenaline junkie, but he's a, he's a real business guy. This guy has built a fantastic business in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, he does about 400 sides uh, a year. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, Wes, thanks for taking the time out today. Now, I've given the audience a brief overview of your background, but maybe take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Thanks, Toby. I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, I, uh, I am the uh, CEO owner of uh, Madden Real Estate. We're, a, we're an independent real estate brokerage and fair, centrally lo located in um, Fairbanks, Alaska, uh, we do have offices in North Pole, Alaska. Yes, the North Pole. It's actually right next. To, you know, our office is actually right next to the, the uh, Santa Claus house. Um, and then just recently, we just opened up uh, uh, our Eagle River office, which is just outside of Anchorage. Um, so, uh, you know, our Fairbanks office consists of, um, you know, we've got 16 sales folks, two two inside sales agents, and, a, and about 10 admin. Um, our Eagle, our Eagle River office is uh, comprised of about six folks right now and growing very fast. And we're the, we've been the top real estate team in, in the state of Alaska for the last five years running. Yeah, yeah, top, and that's and that's why you're, you know, we want to have you on the show, top team. And by the way, you know, I'm friends with, uh, and I can say friends with Bob Corker, and we spend we spend time every week together. And uh, he can, he tells he oh, over and over again, you come up in conversations. So listen, so really quickly, I normally don't ask about transactions, but how many sides do you guys do? How many deals do you guys do a year? You know, it, it ebbs and flows somewhat depending on um, what's happening with the military or, you know, we're, uh, you know, Alaska tends to be at the whim of um, uh, military and uh, oil and gas exploration spending. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're typically right around that 500 transaction mark for the last three years. Um, you know, with the, with the bringing on, um, the Eagle river office, we look to push that even higher. Got it. So, you, so, uh, it's fair to say you're a slacker. Um, so look, t how did you, I mean, so you obviously rule Alaska. I mean, you're the, in real estate, in, in Alaska synonymous with real estate is Wes Madden. But so Wes, what, what is your background? How did you, how did you end up getting into real estate and building this monster of a business? I think like everybody, you just like happen into it, right? Isn't that how everyone's story, uh, yeah, like plays out in real estate? Well, we, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I, I, the army actually brought me to Alaska. I was a, I was a medevac pilot. Mm. I flew Blackhawks around and 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 picked up hurt and sick people and loved my job. Didn't really love um, the army a whole lot. Uh, there was a lot of things with the army that, um, you know, I, f I felt like. Uh, 
uh, it, like the Army maybe uh, was not the most efficiently ran organization. So, you know, I always had this quest for um, excellence in, 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 you know, operational excellence, I guess you could say. And, I, you know, I loved the people. I loved the mission. I loved what I did. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I loved the stress and the challenge, uh, both physically and mentally, that, uh, that the job required. Uh, but it just wasn't – I felt like um, I was somewhat limited – in the in my ability to to control the efficiency of my organization, so uh, I ended up getting I came back from Afghanistan, ended up taking a medical retirement um, following that tour. Um, decided my wife and I decided let's you know we didn't really know where else we wanted to go. We stayed in Alaska. We weren't quite done with the Alaska experiment. Um, got my real estate license, and the next thing I knew, um, you know, a lot of people were telling me about their bad experience and their bad experiences, and they were wondering if I could help them. Um, and the rest literally uh, was history after the first, our first full, my first full year, I think we hit, I think we were the top agent in the, um, in, in Fairbanks. And then it just kept going from there. We just kept kind of, you know, growing, uh, as we, as we, uh, um, as we got to where we couldn't serve all of our, all of our raving fan clients. So it was a really great problem to have, you know, we, I really started in, a, in kind of a sleepy market and, and shook the market up. So it's been, it's been fun, uh, progressing Fairbanks real estate into the, uh, this century. So it's amazing. So, so look, if I look at your background, Wes, I mean, I see a couple things, right? So there's, there's, there's a specific, typically there's a specific type of person that, that gets into the military. Um, you're a pilot, you're a medevac pilot. Um, so there's a, that, that is a certain kind of personality, right? This very detailed kind of like, you know, uh, adventure guy. Um, now, were you also a doctor, Wes, or, or just the pilot? Yeah, just just a pilot. I was I was basically a glorified ambulance driver, and the guys in the back were the uh, were the folks uh, saving lives, you know. So, but it, you know, there was a lot that um, that was very applicable from you know that career to this career. I mean, I got into real estate, and I Toby and I, I I walked in. I did what all the agents do. I go. I went straight to a national franchise, and I signed up with a broker. And then I found out uh, that you know real estate just seemed to be a uh, everyone was just kind of running their businesses um, from the seat of their pants. I, there was no real system. No one really had like any process to what they were doing. And I, I always use the analogy. I, I could, I used to be able to start a Blackhawk in about three, three and a half minutes. I could get a Blackhawk up to, you know, up to um, full speed and be able to take off. And, that, and that's very fast. Uh, but I would still follow the checklist every time because you know the one time that I skip a step in the checklist. You know, I forget to put the fuel um, system select switch into into direct, and and we flame out about you know 300 feet off the ground. And I kill everybody on board. So, uh, you know, kind of an extreme analogy, but it goes without saying. You got to be systematic in your approach to your business if you desire uh, duplicatable results. So. We just started making systems. I mean, I, I didn't find what I was looking for in, in um, uh, with that national franchise, obviously, as, as most people don't. Um, was very fortunate early in my career to pick up coaching. I've always been an athlete, always always uh, sought out mentors, and, and coaching and business just seemed like uh, the right thing to do. I uh, was lucky, lucky to um, uh, make contact and, and develop a very strong bond with uh, Bob Corcoran also at Corcoran Coaching and Consulting, and they really helped me catapult my business to the next level. And then I, I later went – that's when I went independent on our own, and we've been independent for five years now. Okay. So so you you touched on exactly what I, want, what I wanted to get to because – you know, normally, you know, I, I have uh, I have one friend who is I have a few friends that are pilots. I have one friend that flies helicopters. I, I also I'm in San Diego, so I know a lot of military guys. Now, those two yeah. again, those two personality types don't speak business, right? They don't speak sales. They don't speak, you know, how to, you know. Th- there's nothing in those two backgrounds going uh, with how to build a business. Now, the thing for you that what you just said to us. Wes, the thing that was, uh, I guess, universal was systems, right? You followed that checklist when you when you fired up your Blackhawk. So when you got into your business, you started building systems. What you know? Did you struggle with the uh, the notion that you weren't necessarily a sales guy and like sales wasn't your 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 background? Or I, I, I'm trying to blend like the sales and business building with these systems yeah. that you had. I, I think at some point, I think uh, you know. It, yeah, I guess looking back, one of my one of my medics at the time said, uh, "Wes, you know, I, I knew when we were over in Afghanistan when you were when you were dope dealing to give us get us. Uh, I mean, uh, we got uh, I don't know satellite." Uh, 
satellite TV. We got a phone system hooked up through the satellite at that time so that, um, you know, our soldiers could talk to their loved ones back in the U.S. Um, we were able to uh, negotiate uh, materials and local national um, um, workforces to build us new new hooches out at some of our forward operating bases. So I actually had to do a lot of selling, believe it or not, you know, uh, in that combat environment. You know, the, what the military actually gives you is very little, and you're very limited at what you could do. So, the in, uh, you know, you had to be very ingenious to come up with ways that you can make um, – we used to call it embracing the suck, right? It was so bad, it was good, if that makes any sense, right? So we would just, uh, you know, my guys always knew that we were going, to, I was going the extra mile for them, I guess, to make life not so bad. And, you know, we look back now, and those were some of the best times, even though they were some of the scariest times, some of the best times we ever had. And so the so sales was kind of there, but I, I think, I think by and large, it, you know, I would fly on these, you know, nighttime medevac missions under goggles, uh, under uh, night vision goggles. Wow. So you got a 40 degree. Imagine flying at 40 degree field of view, uh, green scintillation. Um, you're flying a, a complex aircraft, uh, multi-engine aircraft, uh, in in some very treacherous terrains. So, you know, I fly in Alaska, and um, Afghanistan has some of the most uh, treacherous uh, mountainous terrain uh, you can imagine. Um, against an enemy that knows that my medevac bird with big red crosses does not have, um, does not, is not armed with offensive weapons. So you can pretty much imagine, um, you know, the threat that's there. But at the same time, we're also talking on six radios navigating, um, to, to, uh, the point of injury. Um, you know, all the while, uh, I'm just making sure that I'm flying tactically and I'm not killing my crew. So, you know, I think managing stress and managing um, what's important in the whirlwind, and I think you get caught up in the whirlwind, whether it's whether it's combat or your daily business or life. I mean, I think it's very easy to get get caught up in the in the in the whirlwind, and you're not focusing on what's truly important, what's the highest and best use of your time at that at that moment. You know, and that was one thing that I felt like I had over other agents was, you know, real estate just wasn't that stressful. I mean, I, I would see other real estate agents. Uh, um, really breaking down in moments of crisis or what they perceive to be moments of crisis or negotiations. And it just, you know, compared to what I used to do, it just, it didn't seem like it was that, um, that stressful. So I think being that calm in the storm, <laughs> helping pull the client through, um, what may be a very stressful time in their life, you know, and, and in Alaska, every buy and every purchase and sale is very stressful because our, our clients don't just, uh, buy houses here. They're usually moving here from 4,000 miles away, or they're selling their house and moving 4,000 miles away. You know, it's just, it's, there's a lot of stressors to getting here. And uh, it just kind of adds to that. And I think when you've got strong leadership, both from, from myself, but really resonating throughout my entire organization, we know that we're more than just real estate agents. We're, we're really relocation directors. And to be that person to help you with more than just buying a house, I mean, it's moving up here, how to keep your, you know, your car from freezing up, um, how to survive in this environment. Um, it really develops a great bond um, with the client, um, with our team, and I think it, I think there's a lot of value there. I think our I think our our, our um, you know our clients are very appreciative of the service that we're able to provide, and I like it because it's a challenge. So. Well, look, I mean, it's not that much of a challenge. I mean, I mean, you just you just relayed to me this incredible story of you know you flying at night, night vision goggles, right? You have no offensive weapons, you know this crazy terrain. You know, it's it's kind of like you know you see those guys in the circus; they're they're juggling chainsaws, you know, riding a unicycle. I mean, that, <laughs> right? That's what you're used to doing. And here's the thing: here's what you said early in the, on in this interview. You said, "Hey, that stress, like I kind of like it." Yeah. So so yeah. <laughs> It's just an amazing. I think you have to. I think. I think you have to like it. I think that's what. I think that's what you know uh, draws people to sales. I mean, you got. You have to like. You know, you got to understand that you got to. In order to help somebody, a lot of people get into real estate because they say, "Oh, I want to help somebody." Well, yeah, who doesn't? But the thing is, you got to make a sale to be able to help somebody yeah. in real estate. Yep. So you know, it's a critical piece of the of the equation. So, but here, here's what I here's how, kind of how I wanted to tie. I want to talk about that, but I, I want to, in terms of you liking stress and you know you doing this you know risky stuff, right? Um, um, here's one thing that, I, that I, I'm, I'm always really fascinated when I talk to a guy like you. Your, your first year, 
you were the top guy in in Fairbanks, and that wasn't enough, right? And now you're the top team in Alaska. You're doing 500 transactions. A guy like you, Wes, you you know how to build a business where you can totally step out of it. And look, at the, by this point, you're making a ton of money. You know, at some point, it, you, it, you may not need to 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 make any more. You may have enough money for you to live for the rest of your life today. And if you don't, you will in three years. What is it about a guy like you, a personality like you, that you just keep? pushing the pedal to the metal, right? Because you did 500. Guess what? That's not enough for West Madden. You want to go bigger. What is that thing? And maybe, and, and, and is that thing, is that something innate in you or, or is it something you've developed? Well, I think, I think it, I think it's mostly innate. I mean, I, you know, when I first got into business, I said, well, wait a minute, you know, this is exactly what I was looking for. I can be, I can be uh, compensated directly proportional to the effort and efficiency by which I'm working. I mean, you talk about your, I mean, it was like throwing gasoline on a, on a bonfire, you know? And, and the problem with that was I took off at, I took off doing my normal 140 mile an hour speed. And, uh, I was working so hard and so much that I quickly, um, lost sight of my work life balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, so built up, you know, a ton of transactions, a big client base, but I wasn't happy. I mean, I had the income I mean, the income was great. I mean, we made a lot of money. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I was not happy and, and, uh, my relationships were, were, were not great with my, with my family. And I had a, I had a, had a wife and a young son at the time and now have three, three, three boys. And, uh, I knew that I couldn't stay on that path and uh, live the life that I, that I wanted to. So with Bob's help, uh, we, we started leveraging myself through building a business where I wasn't, you know, we're basically backing my way out of the business, you know, to where I was more of a, you know, the, the, the tr a true CEO of the, of the company. Cause that was at, at the end of the day, that, that was where, I mean, I had it cracked. I knew how to be very successful in real estate. Um, but I could design a, um, a, a company that would offer, I guess what I was looking for when I got into real estate, that, that opportunity that would allow me to step in, engage in dollar productive activities the majority of my day, be well supported, well trained, and just, and, and just engage in the fun stuff of real estate at the time, which was set the selling part, you know? So, so we've really been focusing on building that. Um, I've got best, you know, the best work life balance I, you know, I, I've, I've had in a long time here. And, um, you know, it, and it just keeps getting better and better. And, and, you know, like as Bob always says, you know, you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So I say no a lot to a lot of things. Um, however, it, you know, I, I, th I think being able to share what I know with my people, I mean, I, I'll, I'll trade, I'll trade some income to show others, you know, how to do what I do. And, and that's where the true joy comes in. And, and, uh, so that's been fun, you know, and not, not only that, uh, Toby, but you know, it's really allowed me to get involved in our local uh, community with um, a lot of charity organizations, nonprofits. There's so many organizations in town, um, at least in my town, and I'm sure in every town across the United States that 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 could really benefit from our energy, um, our knowledge, know-how, not just money. You know, I mean, you, you know, I was kicking money to some of these charities all the time, but then I said, you know what? You know what they really need? They need someone to step in and be on their board yeah. and help them right the ship. You know, because I, I mean, I can. I can set a budget. I can give them a business plan. I can, this is stuff I do in my sleep. So that, that's really where you can benefit. So, you know, I, I encourage for anybody, I mean, leverage yourself so that you can give back. Cause I mean, I'm, you know, if, if, if you're like me, that's, that's really what fuels you. And that, that's better than any amount of, of, of money in the bank to me. And, um, and so it's been real, real rewarding and keeps getting better every year. Yeah. And we can, we can talk about the whole finding your why in a second. Let, let me go back to the work life balance. And I want to get your take yeah. on this. So, so, okay. Here's my belief, and I, I've struggled with that for a long time. The whole, you know, uh, you know, I've had some really, really good years, and you know, then, then I'll, I'll, there's years I'll pull back, and every time for me, I do something new. And I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've done six different companies now. It's yeah. my belief that when you start something, if you want to win, if you want to go out and build something great, you have to sacrifice your work life balance in the beginning, right? It doesn't mean that, you know you have to know when to pull back, but there, I don't believe there is a, and I want your take. I don't believe there's a way to to really start a business from scratch and make it successful without robbing from from your family, you know, time and energy, and you know, from your family and friends. What's your take on that? I would I would agree with you. I, I don't think it's like a static you know line where it's like, hey, you know, I'm at I'm at work from nine to five, then after five, I'm you know, I'm I'm at 
I'm at home and that's my balance. I mean, I think, you know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're right. I mean, that ebbs and flows depending on where, what stage of your business you're in. And, you know, I think the startup phase, no, no phase is more painful than that startup phase. But I mean, I remember, uh, I think it was Darren Hardy. I got to listen to Darren Hardy at a conference and he had the pendulum swing. You know, if you're willing to endure more pain, how much pain can you endure? Because when that pendulum swings back, you know, you got that reward. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of a good way of looking at it. And I think very few people are willing to, you know, go through the pain um, that it takes to, you know, to do what, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of successful entrepreneurs are, are willing to do. But I think they always keep, I think you've got to have buy-in with, um, you know, with your family. I mean, there's been some things we've had some opportunities that we've said no to where, you know, I just sat down with my wife and we said, how, you know, is this what we want? And we decided, you know, it's not, I mean, it would have been financially great for us, but it would have taken more time. And, uh, we just didn't feel like that was the best use of my time at that, you know, at that moment in our, in our life. And I think you gotta be like, you gotta communicate not just with your people, but I mean, with your, with your family. And, and if you truly hold them in high regard, I mean, I think you're making decisions in business decisions that are, that benefit, um, uh, benefit your family. Yeah, I, look, I agree, and this is where this is where I think you know where I think you were fortunate early on to to get a coach and get a coach like Bob because a lot of entrepreneurs they they're going along and they see an opportunity, right, that next shiny object, and they only yeah. see the potential reward, right, and they they're and, and they're like, oh yeah, I know it's going to take all this energy and and you know all this time, and I'm going to be away from the weekends for my wife, whatever it is, and they go. But, but but I think – but and they do it because in reality, that person doesn't have an ab- abundance mindset, right? It's a scarcity mindset. They, they see that opportunity, that shiny object. They're like, oh, you know what? If I don't take this now, it's never going to show up again. Okay. So, so look. So if I um, – I want to I want to talk about checklists real quick because, you know, you again, you were very you, – you, to start that Blackhawk in three minutes – you had to do those checklists. You had to do them fast. That's what you started building in your business. You started building systems. What were those early systems that, that you built into your business that has sort of built the, the, the strong foundation that you have today? You know, it was, it was as simple as – I still remember the day when I hired my first employee and I knocked it out of the park because – she was the receptionist at my at the brokerage I used to work for. She was qu- she was actually quitting and she was leaving. I said, "Hey, where are you going?" She goes, "Well, I, you know, I just can't do this job anymore. I can't work for the broker." And I said, "Well, hey, you want to come work for me?" She's like, "Well, what do you want me to do?" And I had literally for two weeks I was time tracking my day by the half hour, and I was I was basically highlighting the half hour blocks that I was actually engaging in dollar productive activities, and I wrote down what else I was doing that was just support activities. And I said, "Well, let's just start with." with these things that, you know, I want to, and I think at the time I was like coloring, uh, the DPA time yellow or green, something that correlated with money. Right. And everything else was like pink. Cause I was like, Oh man, it's gotta be some humiliating color yeah, for fluff. me. So I, yeah. I would like highlight it pink. Right. So, cause I'm a tough guy, but, uh, so I was highlighting pink. I said, well, just do all the pink stuff. So we just started making a list and start with a piece of paper and you make a list. And then that list became top producer action plans. And, you know, and then our, our system has just evolved over, over the, over, over time, um, so that we can be scalable across multiple markets and we can be prepped to um, add salespeople and add volume and add markets, but yet not get drugged down operationally. And now we're working with a Salesforce platform. Um, we've got a lot of logic built into how our workflows work and, uh, you know, it just keeps getting more and more sophisticated. And, and um, you know, but there's a, there's a fine line there where you don't want to get so systematic that it, that it, that it impacts the efficiency or the effectiveness yeah. of what it is you're trying to approve. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you, you can, you can be too systematic. Don't get me wrong. You know, you still want your people to operate using cognitive thought towards, you know, providing that raving fan experience. You don't want to get it off that, you know, you don't want to just check the box, t- check the box type people. Um, so you got to just kind of monitor that and make sure that you're keeping um, the, the vision and the purpose of, of what we're here for uh, at the forefront. Yeah, well, see, and see, I think that's the art of, of being a CEO, right? Being able to step back yeah. and go, it's not all about efficiency. I'm going to give up, just like you will give up some money op- or financial gain opportunity for time. You need to give up some, sure. you know, with your people, you know, right? you need to, you want that raving fan uh, experience. So uh, I, again, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think that's certainly an art that, that most people can't see and they can't see man because they're so involved in their business. Were, were you, right. were you naturally Wes, were you naturally sort of of the mindset uh, when you first started? Like, you know, you came out of the gate strong. Um, when, let me ask it this way. 
At what point did you say, okay, listen, I want to I wanna build this and be the true CEO of my company rather than this guy you know, in it and make, wrenching on it all the time? You know, I think, I, you know, our, as you can imagine, our houses are, are, are uh, quite interesting up here in Fairbanks. And so we, we'll get like 40 item engineer reports back, you know, on these real estate transactions. And our, you know, the buyers and sellers just going back and forth. At some point, I just said, if I have to negotiate another engineer report, I swear I, I'm going to be out of this business. I just can't do it anymore. You know, because I knew that wasn't the highest and best use of my time. So it really was just, you know, I just, I think it was when I was able to, yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, Toby. I, I think I knew that when I was able to bring in um, buyer specialists and listing partners that mm-hmm. maybe had not done great in the business or failed and got back into the business, and then I showed them the right way and put them in a position to succeed, and then they were successful, and they were, and literally, they were like, it like changed their life with their family. I just, I saw that, and I said, you know, this, I need to really focus on being the best uh, CEO I can possibly be. You know, and, and that's the thing is, I, I, I believe, you know, I'm. I'm learning every day. I've got a long ways to go as a leader um, and as a CEO, and that, that'll continue, you know, over the rest of my life. And, and um, you know, a lot of, you know, just like your, your radio show, your podcast, uh, you know, there's just so many nuggets. There's so much to pull, um, you know, from the, the smart minds in the industry and outside the industry that, uh, you know, just keeps getting better and better every year. Yeah, no, I agree. So, so here, let me ask you this, this way. Um, a lot of times, right? Again, I, I've for some reason I, I normally don't talk about personality types as much as I have on this episode. And I don't know why it, it keeps with you. It keeps coming up in my mind, but you know, there's there's a certain personality type that uh, earlier you said there's a difference between um, uh, you know startups are very hard. When you start up a company, the, at the startup phase is the very hard thing. It takes us there. That's one temperament. And, 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 and you, I see this in tech companies all the time, right? There's, a, there's startup guys, and then there are guys that can actually run a big organization. Now, normally, especially in tech, there's the startup guy who starts it, and usually those, those founders get moved out, and a professional CEO you know, comes right. in. And, and here's the thing. I want to talk – I want to find out if you struggle with this. The thing that those startup founders cannot get themselves past is the notion of, right, they're very tight by, very hands-on. Whatever the thing is that they want somebody to do, they can't let it go because they know nobody's going to do it as good as them. And so you know what? Because nobody can truly do it as good as them, they never let it go. Did you ever struggle right. with that, Wes? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we called, you know, that, that first core group, we call, we call ourselves the founders, right? We're the founders of the company. And, and the thing is, is, we I think you have to keep that. I think as you add more people to the, to the company, I, you know, it's the same thing. You're, if you're a startup guy, you, you're bringing new blood into the company that maybe didn't go through that startup phase and felt that pain, the, 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 the time and the, and, the, and the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to build the company. And they don't they don't maybe appreciate it as much. So there's the, that's the culture piece. And that, that's where you have to make sure that you, you pay attention to the past and you're, and you're, and you're making sure that, that new folks joining the organization know um, what it took to get there. So they don't take it for granted, you know, so there's still that, that culture piece. Cause I think when people commiserate together, I mean, it really builds a, a really tight bond. Yeah. Um, and that's what we surely, that, that's what we definitely had when we started. Uh, but, uh, I struggled with that. You're exactly right. I would I would classify myself as a startup guy because, you know, I was a Midwest farm boy wrestler. Um, I just I don't I don't quit. I got you know that intestinal fortitude. Um, I don't give up. I'm I'm a I'm a forever optimist. I'm you know I look at things in positive light. You know I can I can drive people through really really um, tough situations to, to, to get on the other side and, and, uh, and enjoy, uh, accomplishment. Um, but once it's all built and it's running, I've had to learn how to be that, like you, as you said, the, the professional CEO, someone that comes in and, and is now managing an already built company. That's been my challenge. You know, I, I'd actually prefer just, you know, going through that startup phase cause it's, cause I'm, I'm a adrenaline junkie. So. Right. Right. I was going to say, so, so really quick on culture, you know, what you said was, sure. You you have you know you have the the founder group and then as you add more people you get you get the the blood starts to get a little bit diluted right because the, you know yeah. it may, the 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 fifteenth person probably doesn't have the same you know um, they haven't been the, they, they haven't gone through that war right of of the ups and downs of starting what about and I've seen this in organizations as well you know. It, it, you know, fifteenth person up to twenty-five, really sort of past twenty-five, 
and I, I'm not sure if you're there yet, but what happens is it becomes us and them. Right. Oh, that's the new guy. Right. Like, you know, it becomes an us and them. And I, and I think culture starts to get that. That's when really being a CEO and, and having management, you know, strong management comes into play. I think you I think you got to look at each evolution as a business as a new startup period is, is how I look at it. You okay. know, it's it's we've evolved over time. You know, it started off with, hey, it's Wes and then a couple of buyer agents in a, in a, in a couple of admin people. And then it became. Um, you know, Wes, uh, an operations manager, a listing partner, a couple, a couple. You know, just kept it just kept changing, mm. and every time you change, I think I think if you're engaging your people, um, I think if you know, you said us versus them. If you have an us versus them, it's it's. Um, I think you, when you when you bring in on when you bring new folks in, I think you have to look at the the challenges external to the company as being the them and us is still us, and they you have to you have to generate that. That startup um, uh, that feeling, you know, so that everyone feels like they played a part in that. I think I think yeah. you do that through effective, um, um, ba- the, you know, the, the battle rhythm of your of your meetings, your brain. If you're doing, um, you know, regular brainstorming sessions, offsites, uh, team advances, whatever you want to call them, right. where you're really drawing from the team their ideas on how we can make this better. You know, you're just constantly innovating and improving. The, the, the business and then they feel like then they get buy in because if you've if you've given something if you can you commiserated with your teammates it's just you feel like you're a part of an organization I just find that that's huge for retention yeah. and for keeping that culture going I really do I 100% agree um, earlier I want to I want to understand something about you know, earlier you said yeah. you know when you started to add teammates or, or team members you said you took some people who were struggling right they really hadn't done very well and then you put them in a spot and they and they all of a sudden became you know they started to win and uh, and then their lives changed man you remember you saying that you said hey the you know the with their family everything changed what is the difference between the environment that they were in where they where these people couldn't succeed and then and then the environment you put in them in and their lives were just transformed well listen i think i think real estate in general i think it's the odds are stacked against you uh, if you're a new agent i mean the 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 way yeah, at least the support that was offered, you know, in the brokerages that were in, you know, in my in my market. I mean, there wasn't anybody that, you know, nobody was interested in taking on a newbie because no one really had like a an, a new agent training plan. No one had taken the time to think that, hey, maybe there's maybe there's some, you know, talented people that want to get in the real estate industry. Um, so, anyways, I, I I think a lot of them were in that in that rut where they're trying to do everything on, you know, by them by themselves. They've got they've got no money to spend towards marketing yet they need to generate income. Um, you know, it's kind of like this, you know, you know, not everybody has an MBA. Not everyone is a marketing uh, has a marketing degree, you know. Um, but yet they're good people and they're great real estate agents. Um, and what they don't understand is a lot of real estate agents don't run their businesses like a business. I think we all know that. And I think that's why you have a huge disparity between those who make it and those don't, or, or, or I should say who's making the money and who isn't, Yeah. you know, or the, you know, so it's really just kind of bringing them in and, and just, and just in shrinking it down, shrink it because they're going in eyes wide open. They're looking at 180 things. You're bringing it. You're saying, "I want you to focus on four things, and I, every, everything else I'm going to take care of for you." But I want you. I want you to be truly world class in these four things. Can you do that? And it just makes it, you know. And, and I think if you hire the right people, um, it just they just knock it out of the park. And it, it which has been the case for me. I mean, I didn't. I, and it was the same in the army. And this is when I talk about the efficiencies, inefficiencies in the army. I mean, I'd have a guy who's a mechanic on a on a Blackhawk, and he, you know, he's just, he's just not made to turn wrenches. Okay. Well, the army would make him do push-ups, tell him he's not a good soldier, and then we'd end up, you know, you know, kicking him out of the army or something, or, or hopefully reclassing him. But I'm sitting there looking at this guy, and I'm like, why don't they do a little bit better assessment of this of this kid's talents? Because I don't, I don't think anybody shows up to work and says, well, I want to suck today. You know, I, I'm going to go to work. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be terrible. You know, there's no such, you know, I, I can't remember. There was some general that said, there's no such thing as a, as a bad soldier. Um, you know, there, you know, so I, I think it's our job as leaders to be able to put those people in a position to where they can be successful. Um, and it's no different with the real estate company. At least, you know, um, I, I've enlisted the help of John Pike here recently this year. Um, he's helped me with a lot of my recruiting processes, which is, you know, and, uh, behavioral analysis. I mean, we've definitely streamlined that process and that's been, um, that's been great on top of the Corcoran coaching, um, process. 
So, so, so that I mean, you, that, that's very interesting. What you said, what you said about you know, um, uh, understanding people's personalities and putting them. Here's how Gary Keller would say it. Right, he talks a lot about putting people on the right seat in the bus. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody is meant to drive. Not everybody is meant to be the mechanic. Not everybody is meant to be the navigator. Um, I have a long question. I don't even want to know if I want to say it. But here's the thing. People get into, as you know, people get into real estate for two things. You know, they get into it because they want time freedom. They get into it because they want financial freedom. I say it often on the show. They never get to financial freedom because they abuse the time freedom. And, and, you know, what do you do, Wes? You know, take somebody out there. There's millions of these people, right? And you've, you've mentioned these two classes of people or, or these two situations. I'll say it right now. One, these pe- the people that are doing real estate that have no real systems. And then, you know, they, so they have no real systems. They have no marketing dollars, but they need to, uh, to generate income. What do you do? Well, like is somebody out there, I know there is five people out there listening to this episode right now who's in that situation. What kind of advice, if any, can you give them to, to, to whip them into shape, put them on the right seat in the bus in their, in their own business? Well, I think, you know, I think that, um, you know, uh, I always look at, uh, I always look at who's doing it right. And then I, I would, I would gravitate towards them and ask them what they're doing, you know? So, you know, if you're floundering or or having, or struggling in your, in your business, you know, look to who's doing it right and take them to lunch and ask them about what they're doing. I mean, it kind of, that's how I've hired half of my people almost. Uh, but it's, um, uh, you know, what do you mean? I think you'd be su- sorry. Go ahead. Well, I think you'd be. I think they'd be surprised with how many people will openly share with you. You know, the thing that I notice about a lot of top producers across the country is they're, they're sharers. I mean, they they just freely share um, what it is that they're doing. And you know, the thing with real estate is, I I think real estate's like way overtrained. I mean, there's so much training out there; it's it's amazing, but it's uh, but it's but under implemented. You know, you can go to these. You go to these conferences or or or, to, or to getting coaching programs, and you you know there's a hundred things that you can implement, and you end up implementing none of them. You know, and and yep. one of the things that Bob's great at is like pick three things, commit to them, and implement them now. Do it. You know, and sometimes that right there, having that one person to make you implement, hold you accountable to those, you know, to just taking it step by step. Um, sometimes that's where the value comes in with companies like ours, you know, team type structures, uh, you know, cause at the end of the day, everybody's more, everyone's more successful. And, you know, the end result is the clients getting better served, you know, cause you got better people working for you, the more successful. So, yeah, no, I would, I would, I would really, really agree with that Wes. Cause I see people listen to this show and I, and I'll get, I will get tweets. We have a very strong Twitter tribe and our, our, our handle is at super agents live in case anybody listening doesn't know. Um, but I will get people take pictures and, and they'll post them to my timeline or on my stream and there'll be like notes for today's episode and people will take like four notes. And, and what I see with these people, and this is what you just said, you know, I see these people get all these ideas and they're like, Oh, this is a great idea. That's a great idea. And all they do is they put, they just keep putting a laundry list together and their, their line just gets longer and longer and longer, and they never go, okay, I'm going to double down on this one or this two or these three. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got, I'm kind of geeky when it comes to these conferences because, I mean, I think one of the things – I'd go to these conferences, and I would take books of notes. And I kind of had a process, and this is just the way I learned, but I would, I would, I would scribble down the notes. And then on the plane ride home, and, you know, I, I live in Alaska, so I usually have like 18 hours to – uh, work in, in, on airplanes and airports uh, uh, to get my notes out. But I would type them out again, and then I would go through and I would select three, three of the of the ahas or, or nuggets that I pulled from that conference, and those, and then I'd set timelines on when we we're going to implement those things. And they would be a hundred ideas, but you know, it's that whole concept. Just pick three, knock those out, and once you knock those three out, um, if they're working, then go on and pick, you know, and pick some more. But I mean, there's a lot. There's so many things that you could focus your energy on. I think the nice thing with brainstorming with, uh, at, you know, at any of these conferences or masterminds um, is, 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 again, seek out people who are doing something really well, you know, and, and find out how they're doing it. I mean, um, and they'll freely share, and, and it's going to save you a lot of time, time energy, and, and, and money, of course. So, and, and earlier, and I, I interrupted you, and then I, you know, um, you said that, that uh, top producers are willing to share. So, you know, go find somebody who's doing it well, go out and, and go out to lunch with them. And you said that's how, you, how you've hired half your team. Literally, are you saying did, that 
half of your team, they just reached out to you and said, hey, Wes, I see you're, you, that you're killing it. You know, can I go out to lunch? It, you agreed, and all of a sudden, they're part of the Wes Madden family? Yeah, I'm going to... I'll tell you what, I think uh, until I hire John Pike this year, I don't think I, I don't think I advertised for or recruited a single, a single agent on my, on my team. They came to us. They saw, they saw our agents being successful. They mm. saw our people being, being happy and full of energy at, 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 at events. They saw our people engaged in community events. They just, they saw, I mean, people saw us and, and how we acted. And it wasn't just the sales numbers. They just saw that we, you know what, we have fun. And I don't know about you, uh, you know, it's kind of like we had our company softball team and, and you know, play, playing softball is fun, but like winning playing softball is even more fun, you know? So yeah. we like to win. And whether that's winning in business or winning at home, um, you know, we support each other and I, that you, it's, it's palpable in the community. And I think if, if you don't have people coming and, and reaching out to your real estate team and, and asking you, Hey, uh, can I learn more about this, about your team and the opportunity? Um, then I would look at the perception of your, of your company within the, within the community and be cognizant of that. What, what am I, you know, we talk about, um, with our people, you know, you're always making an impression, you know? There's a certain way that we show houses. There's a certain way that we conduct ourselves when we go to home inspections. When we're in the public, we're representing the company, the brand. We're protecting the shield, and we're always representing it in a in a in a very positive light. Um, and that goes back to the whole my military days. You know, you never took the uniform off. I was always I was always an army officer, and I took that oath. And whether it was on duty, off duty, it didn't really matter. I mm. mean, I, you know, I was always representing our, our country. And that's a, it's an obligation. And, you know, and our people buy into that and they're proud of it. And I think you need to make sure that, that, uh, you know, if you do have a business that, um, you know, that, that, that type of advertising, um, is, is worth its weight in gold. It's better than any classified or Craigslist ad. If, if I run into someone wearing a Madden real estate shirt in a grocery store and I just start smiling and beaming when you ask me what it's like working at Madden real estate, I know that that's the best bit of recruiting that I could ever have out there. And that's how we've gotten the majority of our people. I so, love it. Um, yeah, I mean, the, what John Pike's allowed us to do is just really assess them and be able to tell them up front, hey, listen, you either have sales DNA or you don't, and it just saves you, saves them and saves us a lot of time um, to make sure that we're, we're directing people towards where their strengths are. Because that's really what it is. Strength, it's strength finding, not weakness finding. You yeah. know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna improve your weaknesses. I'm going to highlight your strengths and put you in position to really capitalize on that. So, so, so that, I mean, that's a book, by the way, you're right. You, you know that, right? Strength, strengths finder yeah, straight, 2.0. Is, is that something you, you have all your uh, new people read and assess themselves? You know, I, I, I don't have, uh, that's not one of my top, um, that's not, that's not one of my top mandatory reading books. You know, I, ours is, uh, five dysfunctions of a team, mm-hmm. um, raving fans, uh, big fan of compound effect because it's just about, um, successful habits, um, you know, and, um, you know, I'm still, I, I still love, uh, I love Chet Holmes, Ultimate Sales Machine. You know, I, it's one of my favorite books. I still love, uh, cracking that one open and reading it. But, well, um, well you, well, you beat me to the punch, man. I, that's, a, that's actually one of the yeah. last questions I ask is I give, ask for a book recommendation. So, um, by the way, for everybody in the audience, if you want to read any of those books, Compound Effect, Five Dysfunctions of a Team, uh, or any of those that, that, uh, Wes just mentioned, you can get a free copy using our link audibletrialcom slash superagents live. Um, so <clears throat> you jumped ahead of me there. Hey, real quick, we're gonna start wrap, right. we're gonna start wrapping up here, Wes, because I've had you on now for forty one minutes. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I know you're a busy guy, and I, but I know you love to share. So, in terms of this, you said you know if you know in terms of recruiting, right? Like whether people see us at a community event. <clears throat> and earlier is what I want to tie it into. Earlier, you said in terms of charities, you said you used to throw money at charities, and you realized, hey, I can join the board. In terms of actionable advice, what are some things that uh, that either you do in your team, or you know, look, you're one of these top producers that that people are listening to or spending, it, you know, getting to spend an hour with today. What kind of nuggets can you give them to help them grow? What should they do? Um, and I don't, and that may be just too too big of a question for you to answer. But maybe I'm sure you have some thoughts on on that. Well, I think I think people wanted. I think. <sighs> You know, I think people want to do business with a company that gives back. I mean, especially if you're in a smaller community. We're su- we're in a sub 100,000 um, populous uh, community. Um, you know, I, I 
you know, I don't feel bad giving my money to a company that I know is doing good things with it. You know what I mean? I, and I think the American culture, um, somewhat skewed by the media and stuff to, and movies and whatnot to think that, um, successful companies are somehow greedy and bad. Um, when in all reality, you know, it's the successful companies that, that, that have to give, if that makes sense. So, yeah. um, I, I think, I think, you know, don't miss an opportunity to take a picture, you know, with a big check, handing it to a non, you know, a nonprofit, a child, uh, we've got a scholarship program here where, uh, kids, you know, looking for extra money and, you know, comp, uh, um, youth sports leagues will, will come. I mean, I've, I've had some kids for, you know, I've been mentoring for like four or five years and it's been really great watching them. Wow. They, they, they got to come in, they do an interview. They got to, we do goal setting. They bring their report cards in every year and they're excited for it. And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, their parents can tell them all the time, hey, you need, you need to study, you need to pick up at home. But they come in, they have an interview with Wes Madden, and, and, you know, they're, and they're like the next year they're, they're running in to show me their, their uh, report card and how well they did. So, um, so the parents cool. love it. The, the kids, you know, you, you, you get something out of that as well. And, and it's, just, it's just fun, you no. know, and it, it, it just takes a little bit of time. No, yeah, okay. So I love that idea. So um, that's something I might implement. How did you go about – how old are these kids and, and how did you go about you know, letting people know that you were willing to do that? Well, as soon as, as, soon as, you, as, soon as you let people know that you're willing to do that, all of a sudden you know, every child in the community is coming here asking for money because the parents are going, hey, you know, it's, it could be $13,000 to have a kid in, in comp hockey because you're traveling all over the state and the country. I mean, plane, t- plane tickets are expensive, so, and the equipment's expensive. It just happens to be a function of being in, in Alaska. Uh, but, uh, you know, and we, and we take pictures, post on Facebook and we get mileage out of it, but we, we got a process, you know, it's not just every, everybody up the street. I mean, we have a, you, you know, we, it's something that we, uh, uh, we make decisions on quarterly. There is an application form. There's things you have to do. So it kind of weeds out the people that are just looking for, right. for kind of a handout, right. you know, and preference is given, preference is given to past clients and their, and their children. So as, as should be. So you're kind of passively telling them, Hey, listen, you do business with us. You know, you're in the family and we're going to take care of, um, you know, your family to come. I mean, it goes beyond our closing. So it just kind of keeps that vibe going with it's, our clients. Yeah. It's like a fraternity, man. It's legacy. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Oh, your, your parents bought a house with me. Absolutely. I'll sponsor you for, you know, I'll sponsor your hockey team this year. Absolutely. So, so but, money well, you know, and look, and not everybody again, not everybody audience can, you know, has that much time or, or, or can do that. doesn't have that kind of a footprint. Right. I mean, cause especially I'm in San Diego, right? Like I'm, you know, I, I, you live in a sub 100, thousand person town i'm in a town of two million it's hard for me to get you know above that right. above the noise um you know what what did you do start somewhere yeah okay yeah, right start okay start somewhere like where can people what do you think people do can, can you know you're on the board of charities let's say that i'm i'm mildly successful or i'm working to be successful but i i, I want to help you know should i go and and um and not me individually people in our audience you know should we go and uh find a couple charities to to join the board of to build our business, right? This is, I mean, the sub, you know, the, the, the echo effect of this is to build our business. I think in everything you do, you got to do something that you're passionate about. I mean, find that one thing you're passionate about. You, you know, if, if you're, if you're, if your wife or mom had breast cancer, breast cancer, maybe re- you might be really passionate about that. Uh, you know, um, um, there's, I would start there just find and just ask yourself, what am I passionate about? You know, for me, it was, uh, bringing youth wrestling to Fairbanks. Cause mm. I was a wrestler. Mm. It did so much for me when I was a kid. So I, you know, so I looked at the youth wrestling in town and it was in shambles. So I got involved. Um, obviously, obviously if you go into those types of organizations and, and start helping, they, they just look to you and go, Hey, you're a natural leader. You need to be president. You need to get this up and going. So then you're, then you're, then you're like, oh, okay, saying yes to something and saying right. no to something else. So yes. manage your time. Yeah. Just get involved with something that you're passionate about and start from there. And the rest is, you know, the rest will take care of itself. See, I can, I can I totally understand now how, you know, you said that earlier, you were saying, Hey, I learned, I learned to say no. Right. And, and, and saying no is yeah. a skill. Um, I can see now what your bid is because like you are a guy you are you you know you could be the mayor of of your city probably you're a guy who has horsepower the, the yeah i i stay about as far away from politics as i can because uh, <laughs> if that frustrates me right nothing about politics is efficient so yeah no i uh but yes yeah it is that it does give you that type of recognition you know and and uh we've been sought out for various you know political campaigns or positions got it man 
<laughs> Listen, Wes. Not interested. I, I, yeah, no, look, I, you're a guy. I would love to have you on again. You're a guy that I could spend two hours on the phone with. But I, 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 I want to wrap up with a few things. And I'm, I mean, this question that I have for you is one of the one of the standard ones I have, and I, most of my questions, I hopefully you could tell, there are you know are not standard. But um, do you, Wes? What personal habits do you have that you feel contributed to your success? Uh, you know, to, to to quote Chad Holmes, "Pighead discipline." Yeah. Um, you know, and I. Uh, my, if my coach said do something, I, you know, I did it. I just didn't, you know, I'm not a, I, 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 I don't engage in limiting beliefs. I, I, you know, there, there's not a whole lot, you know, I, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy and I'm more powerful than my environment. And, and, um, I think anything's possible, um, with the right attitude and, um, and, you know, so big headed discipline, I'd say would be my, my uh, my number one attribute. You know it's funny. You know it's funny. I wrote, I take notes when I'm interviewing, and uh, literally as soon as you we get you got on in the first thirty seconds, you you said you're a pilot, and I wrote down discipline, and then and then. Uh, 30 minutes in, you said, I was a Midwest farm boy. I wrote that and I wrote down discipline, right? Especially with your wrestling background. Discipline, and for a guy like you, man, pig had a discipline. That's, that's, man, you know, you know what? Yeah, I, 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 look, I love talking with guys like you. You're super successful. You, you have no limiting beliefs. You could do anything you want and you believe it, Wes, but you know what? Man, you exude, exude humility, right? You, there is no, there's no hubris. You know, I don't, I don't know if hubris is. You know, you know what I mean, I, and I think that's very cool that you can maintain that even at the level that you are at. Oh, thank you. And that's that's the mid that's Midwest uh, upbringing for you there. Got it. <laughs> hey, Wes, listen, man. Uh, I always I, I always ask or I always encourage my guests to to reach out, say hello, say thank you uh, for people like you coming on the show. So I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna say thank you, Wes, for coming on. Where can people find you and, and where if they want to, you know, kind of see what you're doing or say hello or, you know, again, say thank you for taking time out to come on. Where can people find you? You know, you can find us on Facebook, uh, Madden Real Estate. Do a search. Find our – you can find uh, a lot of what we're doing on a daily basis on there. Um, come on, like the page, say hi. Um, and then, uh, in fact, we're doing a coat drive right now. You can see some of the happy pictures we got on there with our coat drive that we got going on in our community. Or you can find us at westmadden.com. Uh, on on the web, wow! Uh, what what a code drive what, again? Great ideas. Are the listen, <laughs> I have one. I mean, all these little like things that you're doing. Are are there things? Are these that are you the brainstorm of these things, or is someone? Else, are you modeling someone else with the code drive and you know sponsoring kids? And I mean, like, where do, are you getting these ideas? You know, a lot of it's, you know, we can come up with the ideas or people, sometimes people just come to us and say, hey, listen, we know that you could help us with this or here's a need. Do you think you could put something together for this? And we've got a large marketing, you know, we obviously have a large marketing uh, presence and um, and um, we're always happy to use that to, to better our community. Got it. I love it, man. Hey, man, uh, let's definitely, I would love to have you on again and um, – uh, I'm going to sign off, but sit tight, and I want to talk to you for a couple minutes before before we officially go. All right. Hey, Wes, thanks again. Right on. Thanks, Toby. See you, bud.